Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. This week's video is going to be the garden walkthrough week two. So I'm excited to show y'all how big things have gotten, um, what we've planted, and some of the flowers that have finally started getting some color to them. You can see in the background right here, the zinnias. Um, that's probably my favorite part this week is just all the different colorful flowers. They definitely make the place a lot happier. Um, if you're new to our channel, we live in Northeast Arkansas. We're in zone 7B. We're kind of right on the borderline of 7A and 7B. Um, today is Monday, June the 10th. Uh, it's currently about 7.15 in the evening and it's about 78 degrees. We're actually having really, really nice temperatures this week. High 70s, low 80s, and high 50s, low 60s in the evening. So we couldn't ask for any better weather, especially for June in Arkansas. Um, if you didn't watch last week's garden walkthrough, which was the first one, I'll link it above. Make sure and go back and check that out so you can just kind of see the difference in what one week has made. Let's go see what has changed this week. As y'all can see, the sun is starting to set in the background. Now, if y'all seen last week's video, you've seen a lot of our tomatoes had leaf curl. I've kind of been worried about them all week. Um, I've sprayed the neem oil on them twice now, along with my beans and different things. It seems to be helping some. Some of the tomatoes down towards the end of the garden still are just looking rough. Not looking too well. They got the leaf curl, but a lot of them at the front towards the greenhouse here have really come out of it. So I have hope for those. I'm going to show you all of them. First tomato here we have is a black beauty. You can see. How well these are doing. They're just now starting to put off several blooms over there. An Amish paste and we have yet to harvest a tomato they're really just now starting to put off just starting to get going these tomatoes here are the millionaires some little bitty ones just starting to take off got Bonnie's best. You can kind of see in there, if I can get it in there, little tomatoes are starting to pop up. There's some over here. And these down here on the end of the garden are my purple Russians and they just, I'm hoping that they're going to come out of it. You can see all that leaf curl. There is a couple blooms on there. And like I said, I have been spraying with the neem oil to try to keep the bugs down organically. I'm really trying to stay away from the seven dust. Here's a couple more Amish paste down at the end of the garden. They actually do have some tomatoes on them. Here is the German Johnson's that Levi's uncle had gave me. And they're supposed to be really big tomatoes. So there's what we've got so far. I thought I seen a really big one on this German Johnson. Let me see if I can find it. Yep, that's a pretty, pretty good sized tomato right here. If I can get it out. There you go. Compared to all the other tomatoes we have, that's probably the biggest one I've seen so far. My poor little brandy wine tomato. 
it's still the littlest one out here, but I think since last week it's probably at least grown double in size, close to it. And this is the chocolate stripe. I don't see any tomatoes on it yet. Here's the Dr. Witchy. And it is pretty, if y'all can see there, pretty loaded down with tomatoes to not look too pretty or perky. Got quite a bit of tomatoes on it. Here's some Cherokee purple tomatoes. They're actually starting to get some little tomatoes on them, so it shouldn't be too much longer, and we should get our first harvest of tomatoes. Oh, wow. This millionaire right here. Y'all see inside there? Got a little bad spot on it, but... That's a pretty good sized tomato in there. My peppers are doing pretty good, except for that one right there. I think a cutworm was the cause of that one. And it actually had some little peppers, quite a few jalapeno peppers on it. So I did not prune my peppers this year. I actually pruned the tops of the two that are in pots on the front porch. I've watched several videos on pruning the tops of them and I think it would be a whole lot better production. I'm just kind of scared to do it. I just need to kind of buckle down and do it. Because I never get a huge harvest of bell peppers or anything. You can see how little that one is. And I sprayed all these with the neem oil last night. I hate that I lost that. That is so disappointing to come out here and have one destroyed by a bug. Squash plants are doing phenomenal. You can see just how big they're getting. We actually harvested our first squash last night and there is nothing better than the first fried squash of the season. It'll be just a few days. That one is absolutely loaded. on it as well. I'll probably burn myself out on squash really quickly. So I told you last week in the garden tour that I had three empty spots between the squash that I thought was my lemon squash that never came up. Turns out some of my lemon squash are on the end. I went ahead and planted some more. I try to map out everything and write it down but I just can't keep up with it. Like all the tomatoes, it's just almost impossible until they start producing to know exactly what it is. I'm find a lemon squash down here. Those are so cute. We actually ate lemon squash last night and it was really good. In this whole area down here, I told you that we were gonna plant watermelons and cantaloupe. They've come up pretty well. We're going to have to thin them out. These are cantaloupe. I don't know how many leave seeds. I don't know how many seeds leave I put in each hole, but obviously a lot. Because that's going to be quite a bit of thinning out or transplanting. They all come up, I would say. Down here we've got watermelons. Um, we got what we call this weed is pigweed. I don't know the exact term or name for it. We got it about a year ago in the garden and maybe about two years ago. And man, it is just an aggressive, ugly weed. I don't know how it got started, where it come from, but y'all can see it. And it just, and at first it looks like okra. Like when you're first trying to thin out your okra, it kind of can be deceiving. It's got these Purple roots. Does anyone know the technical name of this? We just call it pigweed. Some of it's kind of 
got thorns and some of it don't, but it just absolutely takes over. And it gets really tall, like as tall as the corn. It's crazy. So if anyone knows the actual name of it, let me know. And if there's anything you can do to get rid of it. We pick it and pick it and pick it and it just comes back faster, it seems like. I'm going to turn y'all around here. In the corn that I was standing in talking to y'all last week, I think some of it is over my head. So it is amazing what one week will do in a garden. And we've got quite a bit of rain. After a rain, everything just burst out here in the garden. Starting to get some tassels. So it won't be long. We're looking about the 4th of July or maybe a week after to harvest the corn. Okra is all doing well and growing. Of course, she, as everyone knows, the okra loves the heat. So it's just gotten really hot the last couple of weeks and I said this week we're gonna kind of have some cooler weather so after this week it probably should really take off next up is the Kentucky Wonder pole beans um, as you can see the bottom still got holes in them I think that's just previous damage but the top leaves are looking really good since I've started spraying the nemole like I said I've sprayed twice now so I think that's really helped there's still a few spots you can see they have holes we need to get a top going this way over it so they can kind of vine out and produce a little bit more but they have just exploded they're starting to put off a little bit of flowers but there's still no harvest on them yet the chinese noodle beans over the trellis here and i was kind of starting to wonder if they was actually going to fill up the trellis or not but as y'all can see it's starting to make its way there. I'll turn you around so you can get a better look. They almost met in the middle. They're getting really close. I just have to keep coming down here and kind of putting them back on the trellis a little bit. That's an everyday job. So here's an update on the sunflower circle. These over here are doing really well. We've got some of these that are starting to come in, starting to fill in all these sides here. Hopefully the it will take over and the weeds will kind of die back a little bit. But you can see, trying to just give you a comparison from week to week, about to my thigh right here. It's our tallest one. So hopefully next week's tour, they'll be up to here maybe. This arch is something new to the garden. We actually had this thrown upstairs in the storage. We found it about three years ago at Lowe's on clearance. Um, so we got it and put it together. Do y'all have any good ideas of something that I could grow that would trellis up on that? It would either have to be something you would put in pots on each side there, or I guess I could plant something in the ground. I just don't wanna have to weed around it too much. Give me y'all's ideas in the comments below what you think would look good right here. And on to all the wonderful flowers. This is probably my favorite flower in the garden right now. And it with just the yellow ones in the background. The Lufagord is getting really big. I keep saying I need to transplant it. I guess I could put it on that trellis. I don't know how well that would do though. Here's a red country okra that I just kind of had left that got stuck there. We've actually been harvesting some cucumbers off, but there's not enough to do any pickles yet. Hopefully in the next week or so we can get some pickles canned. Um, peppers are all doing really well. Like I said, give me y'all's advice on whether you prune the tops of them or not. That'd be interesting to know everyone's feedback. Starting to get some blooms. Here we've got poblanos and cayenne peppers. The perfect size for pickles. I think it'll be just a couple more days and I'll be able to get enough to at least make a batch. Here we've got our sweet potatoes that are looking really good. They're vining off in each direction. Some more marigolds. Of course, on this side, I'm just kind of letting the cucumbers go crazy. There's some really, y'all, I'm terrible about 
planting flowers and then not remembering what they are. I think those are trumps. You all let me know if you know. I think that's what I planted here, but I'm not sure. Are those not absolutely pretty? But the honeybees are loving those. Down here we've still got our bolted lettuce and broccoli. It's not dried out enough yet to try to get any of the seeds off. Carrots are looking really well except for the few weeds that are in there. It is almost impossible to pick the tall grass out of this. Levi's been coming down here and picking a few carrots and eating them. That's about the size that they all are right now. Still looking really good. I think it's time to come and harvest potatoes. That may be a video y'all see this week. I've got some grow bags on the front porch, so we're gonna see how well the raised bed and how well the grow bags did. Just a whole box full of marigolds, all the zinnias. I kind of planted just an array of different ones, so I have a bunch of different colors going on. Is that not beautiful? Some different colors over here on this side. This is definitely my favorite raised bed in the garden right now. I could just look at it all day long. Got all of our onions. See, they're getting pretty good size. One of them's actually starting to put off some seeds. Green onions. Levi's been coming out here and thinning these out pretty good. And all different kinds of peppers. Here we got some more green onions. I'll be ready to get these out so I can get something else going. My deal starting to come up if y'all can see that little sprigs of it I definitely need that for my pickles I got a late start on planting it and cilantro is starting to make an appearance lemon balm I'm gonna come harvest some of this in the morning it, you should just cut it off and it'll just keep growing back and keep growing back, but it's pretty invasive. So I need to come down here and trim it up a little bit before it takes over. Here's some oregano I planted about three weeks ago and they are just slow moving. Starting to get some tomatoes on our ones we planted in the raised bed that we staked up. Those are looking really good. Still got Pretty good leaf curl going on on the ones in the raised bed as well. There's one lonesome flower that's made its appearance here. Okay, we just left the garden. I'm going to walk up here and show y'all what I've got growing on the front porch under the pergola. We're just about to lose sunlight, so I'm gonna try to hurry. And then I'm gonna bring you back to the greenhouse and show you our new solar lights that we got put up in there. It's all lit up and it is so pretty. Okay. In this planter, we've just got a sweet potato plant, not the kind that produces sweet potatoes, just the one that's for looks and vines down. And some more zinnias in here. Y'all, zinnias take forever to grow, I feel like. This is a little blackberry bush. We got it at Tractor Supply. It's actually supposed to be the bush and not the plant. We've never had one of those. But it was almost done, so it's made a pretty good recovery. Here's some more zinnias I just kind of threw in a pot. They haven't produced any flowers yet, but they're getting there. Here's two pepper plants that I had left over. I did top these off today. If you can see right there, I topped this one off. 
Here's my strawberries. I used to have these in that long raised bed that the cucumbers are in and they just got overtaken with weeds and just went crazy. So I actually ordered these on Amazon this year and they're five tiers tall and I'm loving them so far. We've actually got our first harvest of strawberries off. I think they'll probably, you can see a couple little blooms there. So we'll probably get a few more. I am gonna order two more of these towers for next year. I absolutely love this versus trying to keep up with the strawberries in a raised bed. I ordered these on Amazon and I will link them below to our storefront so you can go look these up and check them out. These potato grow bags, I also ordered these from Amazon. Um, we're probably going to harvest potatoes this week, so I'll let y'all know our results on that. You can kind of see some potatoes peeking through, so it's time. That's just a clearance rose bush I've never put anywhere yet. And these are blackberries that I had ordered from Baker's Creek. And when they come in, they were like this tall, itty bitty. So I just put them in a pot instead of putting them directly out into the ground. And they are doing really well. Got my ferns. Pastas. Our front porch is a mess right now. I started cleaning it today and didn't finish. This is the plant that the boys and the boys' stepmom had got me for Mother's Day. This is a piece of driftwood. Our neighbor, right there is his driveway. Um, you've heard me talk about Russell before, but it actually, when the water was really high, it come floating by over there. And I don't know if I can flip it over. Can get this flipped over with one hand so y'all can see this piece of driftwood has got like the perfect little hole in it so he wanted me to put a plant in there or grow something so that's on the to-do list I think it looked really pretty coming out maybe some four o'clocks or something so go around on the front side these rose bushes was just absolutely covered in roses about two weeks ago and they're starting to come out again I cleaned these chairs off today to go down to the greenhouse. They didn't make it that far yet. Kind of just an overlook of our front porch. Mondays are days that I try, if the weather allows, to get my laundry done. So I'm gonna pull my last load off for the day. Dew is starting to set on the grass. So I don't want my towels to get damp again. Another thing that we've started doing in our house is trying to use cloth napkins. I had several of these that I had bought in an estate sale and I had them just in a box. And one day I noticed that my children were just going through paper towels like crazy. I'm talking about six, eight paper towels per meal. And I said, whoa, something has to change. I can't afford this. So we have went to just, this is actually, I think, a placemat that I had. Just whatever cloth napkins I could find that I had on hand. These are some that I had bought in an estate sale. It took a little while for the boys to get out of the habit of grabbing a napkin, but I think we're getting there. I just leave a little, um, probably two or three gallon bucket underneath the kitchen sink. We throw them in it we get done with our meals it's worked out really well so that's something that y'all may want to consider if you don't and probably lots of people already do that but um i definitely am going through way less paper towels now and i think about all the money that i'm saving because i'm already washing towels anyways and those don't take up that much room in the washing machine here's some other ones that we use so does anybody else use cloth napkins and try to eliminate as many paper towels in your kitchen as possible. 
let me know in the comments below if y'all do that and if you have any tips for me i just fold them and put them on a basket right under where the paper towel holder is i still keep paper towels on the holder um, but everybody kind of knows not to use them unless you spill an egg in the floor something's really messy that obviously requires a paper towel I'm gonna go put my towels up real quick and hopefully by the time I get done doing that, it's dark enough so y'all can see the solar lights on the greenhouse. What are you doing, huh? Is that all you want is some loving? Best dog ever, best free dog ever. That's all you want, ain't it? Is that it? And the chairs that I just showed you on the front porch magically appeared down on the patio at the garden, thanks to hubby. So here's the greenhouse all lit up at night. We've got two more strands of lights that we haven't put up yet. I got these lights on Amazon. I'll link them below in our storefront as well. These are the little cellar lights that I got for Mother's Day. They work perfect on the ends. Here's the cellar chandelier that I got for Mother's Day. Just got one little cellar light on the bottom there. Y'all, we're going to wrap this video up. I hope y'all have enjoyed the garden tour and seen a little bit more of the greenhouse and some of my flowers around on the front porch. I hope y'all have a great day and God bless.